Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Math for Noobs. Today we have a physics problem, and I recommend that, as always, you pause the video and try it on your own before delving into this video. Okay, a 50 kilogram grindstone is a solid disc, 0.52 meters in diameter. Press an axe down with normal force 160N, coefficients of kinetic friction, so mu k, uh, between the blade and stone, 0.6, constant friction torque 6.5 newton meters. Uh, between the axle and the bearings. Part A is asking how much applied force must be applied tangentially at the end of a crank handle, 0.5 meters long. Bring the stone from rest to 120 rev per minute in nine seconds. All right, so let's draw a free body diagram uh, with all the variables, both known and unknowns, and all vectors shown. Um, one thing to note here, one little caveat, is the fact that the torque is not actually in real life pointing tangentially like that. Uh, so torque is always going to be into and out of the page. Okay, so in this case, the way it's drawn going clockwise, it, it would actually be pointing into the page according to the uh, right hand rule. But uh, when you're just adding magnitudes of vectors, um, you know, the, the math works out the same if you're just talking about magnitudes. So for convenience sake, we're going to, uh, to leave it like that so we can visualize the problem a little easier. All right, so uh, we are gonna cancel omega naught because it's zero. Green check mark means it's given numerically in the problem. Green circle means that although it's not explicitly given, we can solve for it. For example, uh, lowercase f friction, we are given mu k, so we can solve for that. Blue circle means is our target variable, the desired variable that we're solving for. So anytime you have this type of situation, first thing that's gonna come to mind are the two sister or brother equations which is net torque is equal to I alpha, and net torque is equal to tau one plus tau two plus tau three plus tau four plus dot dot dot, the sum of the torques, in other words. And so we're gonna write both of those out right now. Okay, and I is not explicitly given, but we know for a solid disk, moment of inertia is one half mr squared. We're given m and r, therefore it gets a green circle, meaning we can solve for it. Like the crankshaft given, uh, bearing torque given friction, like I said before, mu n are given R is given explicitly, and we're solving for F, and we see that we actually don't have alpha. So anytime you have a system of equation uh, where you have n number of variables, um, you are going to need at least n independent equations to solve uh, for that system of, of, of equations. Uh, so we have two blue circles, we have two variables here, we're gonna need a second equation, and um, if you look at the diagram that we, we wrote out, uh, we can see now that uh, it's kind of given us a hint. We have this, uh, this otherwise extraneous information in omega naught, omega f, and t. So we're probably going to use that somehow. Um, there's not many equations that involve all of those. There's only a couple. So um, if you think back to uh, earlier in the semester where you learned uh, kinematics and projectile motion, there was the equation uh, VF equals V naught plus AT, right? And if you ever forget that equation, you can just look at the units and they all work out, right? Uh, and from that, you can just replace the, um, the linear terms with their rotational analog. So V goes to omega and A goes to alpha. And you're gonna get uh, omega F equals omega naught plus alpha T. All right, let's see what we got here. We have omega F, uh, it starts from rest, so we have omega naught and we're given time um, I'm not going to circle alpha again because I don't want to have you know a third variable when I've already circled it in the previous equation. So here it's pretty clear to see that we have two independent equations um, and we have two blue circles, two unknowns. So the system of equations is solvable. When you get to this point on your homework or your test, uh, you should feel pretty good that the physics is pretty much done. Uh, from here on out, as long as you're careful, you uh, do the algebra correctly in rearranging your equation as long as you plug in the numbers into your calculator carefully, as long as you're mindful that you have all standard units. So for example, the uh, omega F uh, right now is given in radians, or excuse me, revolutions per minute, so you're gonna have to convert that to radians per second. Other than that, you're pretty much, you're pretty much golden. You're done with the question. All right, so in theory, we're done with all the physics. Uh, the rest of it's just doing simple algebra and plug and chug. But um, of course we know in practice uh, that that's a source of many errors and incorrect answers. So we gotta do this very carefully. We're gonna isolate F, uh, move everything else 
but I, I often then move all the other terms to the other side and divide by L, okay? Um, and then we're going to expand that. So we know for a solid disk, I as one half MR squared. Uh, alpha, we're going to get from our second equation, the omega equation. We can see that if we just divide by T, alpha is omega F over T. Okay, so we substitute there. Uh, F, the friction, we're gonna make mu N because we're given mu and N. And now we're gonna plug everything in. So one thing to note is that the, um, the omega F uh, is given as 120 revolutions per minute. You're gonna have to use dimensional analysis to convert that into the standard units for uh, omega, which is radians per second, or just uh, sec inverse second, second negative one. So we're gonna multiply this by one minute per 60 seconds to get, the, get it to revolutions per second. And next we're gonna get rid of the revolution. So we know there's two pi radians per revolution. And we're not even gonna write down the radians because radians are, isn't a real unit, right? So uh, we can just leave it as two pi. And so now we're that, that thing in the parentheses is actually gonna be in standard units. It's gonna be, uh, let's see, four pi uh, radians per second, okay? And don't forget to divide by time, nine seconds to get uh, units of acceleration, or in this case, angular acceleration. Um, 6.5 Newton meters given, and the rest of it's pretty easy. And your final answer should be 67.6 Newtons. That concludes part alpha. Part B of the question asks, after the grindstone attains a angular speed of 120 rev per minute, uh, how much tangential force at the end of the crankshaft is needed to maintain that uh, constant angular speed? So uh, word of advice here, anytime you hear the buzzwords constant angular speed, uh, the first thing that you should write down or think about is uh, net torque is zero. And the reason why that is, is because constant angular speed uh, means by definition that the angular acceleration must be zero. Because if it was non-zero, it would not be a constant speed, right? And we know that net torque is equal to I alpha. So if alpha is zero, then net torque is equal to zero. So that you're gonna write that down. From there, uh, you know that the net torque uh, is equal to the sum of the torques. So we're gonna sum the torques just like in part A. Only difference is that instead of uh, I alpha on the left side of the equation, like in part A, it's now zero. And we're gonna solve for F, okay? And we're gonna replace uh, mu n for the small f friction. Plugging in the numbers, your final answer is going to be 62.9 Newtons. Um, now, you would expect the answer to part B to be less than part A because uh, it's going to take less force as you're cranking this uh, this handle, this crankshaft, to maintain a certain speed as opposed to getting up to that speed. Okay, and the reason is um, because you're not having to overcome the moment of inertia of the uh, solid grindstone, the solid disk. Okay, so Newton's first law says that objects in motion tend to stay in motion, objects in rest at rest tend to stay at rest, and so that also applies in the uh, uh, for rotational motion. So um, before you have gotten to your final angular speed, it's going to take more force than uh, as you're ramping up to that speed, okay? And if we look at the two circled equations, they look very, uh, the two circled equations in black uh, expressing the different forces, they look very similar except for uh, the bottom one is missing the I alpha term. So that is a really beautiful thing in physics is that your intuition will match and be backed up by the math, right? Um, in part B, we no longer have to deal with moment of inertia because uh, it's already it's already going, um, you know. And Newton's first law says uh, it's it's and in motion it's going to tend to stay in motion, and so uh, we can see that verified by the fact that we're we don't have to deal with uh, the moment of inertia term, okay, in the second force equation on the bottom there. So that concludes part B. So part C of this question, uh, we're asked how much time does it take for the grindstone to come uh, from 120 rem per minute to rest if it is only acted on by the axle friction. So in our diagram at the upper right, uh, basically big F, small f are gone, and you're left only with the grindstone and the tau b. Okay, so we're going to write out the variables we know. Uh, omega f0, big f0, small f0, 
omega naught is given as 120 rem per minute, looks like uh, it's gonna be a repeat from part A, which is this equation, except this time the omega f is the one that's zero. Um, we have one equation, two unknowns, so we're gonna need a second equation, which is gonna come in the form of I alpha is equal to the sum of the torques. Uh, luckily, the big F, small f cancel, and we have two blue circles, two unknowns. So two equations, two unknowns means it's solvable. So that means the physics is done, and now we just have to be careful with our math. We're gonna solve for T. We're gonna substitute uh, negative tau B over I for alpha. And at this point, if you have trouble with this, just remember the mnemonic uh, KCF. So it's kind of like Kentucky Fried Chicken, but uh, Kentucky Chicken Fried, rather. Um, so KCF uh, just means keep change flip. So you're gonna keep the top fraction, in this case, uh, top fraction omega over one. Uh, bottom fraction, uh, you're gonna flip it to I over tau B, and you're gonna change that, uh, that sign from uh, division to multiplication, okay? And of course, the negative one divided by negative one is just one, so the negatives will cancel. So uh, omega naught over one times I over tau B is just gonna be omega naught I over tau B, okay? You're gonna expand the I, plug in your uh, numbers, uh, so right here, we never really explicitly solved for uh, omega naught here. But uh, if you know 120 revolutions per minute, we did some similar work for conversions up in part A, so we can just revisit that real quick. Um, and we see that uh, to convert the 120 rev per minute to radians per second, you just divide by 60 and multiply by 2 pi. And so essentially you're going to get 4 pi there. So that's how I got the 4 pi. I didn't show that work, but you can do it in your head. Final answer, 3.27 seconds. That concludes part C and the entire problem. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you, try to resolve your confusion. Um, and as always, if you have any homework questions or anything related to math or physics that you would like me to solve, uh, go ahead and send that to mathfornoobs.com at gmail.com and I'll make another video. Until next time, good luck.